Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all about the most overhyped, overrated fragrances according to you. We're putting them all on blast today. And in case you were wondering, the answer is yes, this is a drama channel now. No, I'm absolutely kidding. This video is not intended to trigger anyone. In fact, it's the opposite. My goal is to just normalize having a different opinion than most people. We all know that fragrance is so personal. It's personal because our bodies are different. Something that smells really good on you might not smell the same on me, but fragrance is also tied so closely to memory and our emotions. So it's almost hard to believe someone when they say they don't like a fragrance that you really love. It's like, how dare they? Yesterday, I posed the question to my Instagram community and I asked, what do you think is the most overrated or overhyped fragrance? And I received a lot of answers, a lot of repeat offenders. In fact, some of them surprised me. I think you will be surprised because a lot of the fragrances on the list are bestsellers. So you might feel like the odd man out, everybody likes it, but you don't. And that's just simply not the case. So I went through all of the responses and I created the top 10 list. So we're going to go through your responses and then I'm going to share my personal list of overrated, overhyped fragrances. And my very last disclaimer before we dive right in is that these aren't necessarily bad perfumes. You might really dislike some of them, but most of the fragrances, at least on my personal list, I like them, I just don't love Love them. I don't understand all of the hype and attention that surrounds them. Coming in at number 10, we have a tie and it's not even a single fragrance. They're brands. But I received this answer by multiple people, both brands. Jo Malone, anything. Tom Ford, anything. People seem to think that these are really overhyped brands. Now the Jo Malone, I can kind of understand because what a lot of people pointed out is that the fragrances are just very light. They're cologne concentrations. They're not going to be beast mode or really intense, long-lasting fragrances. Some of them might be very long-lasting on you, but I think in general, people are somewhat disappointed by them. And I've heard that quite a bit. I remember hearing that complaint whenever I worked in store at Nordstrom. Now, Tom Ford, that kind of surprises me because Tom Ford is known for his fragrances. I mean, the Private Blend Collection, their award-winning fragrances. Lost Cherry won, I think, best fragrance of the year a couple years ago. Somebody threw in Lost Cherry they felt was overhyped. I think maybe when a brand becomes so popular and so well-known for fragrance that a lot of people start talking about it, it gains popularity, and then inevitably it does become a little bit overhyped. I do think there are some incredible Tom Ford fragrances. Some of my favorite fragrances from my personal collection are Tom Ford. But I wouldn't say as a brand, eh, I don't know. I think of the designer brands, I think Tom Ford is up there as being one of the best for a fragrance. Maybe right under Chanel and Dior. It's really tough to beat Chanel and Dior. They just have so much history. Coming in at number nine, Delina from Parfum de Marly. I think this is tall poppy syndrome. It's such a great fragrance. Everybody loves it. So people start to want to hate on that fragrance. That surprises me because Delina, at least it used to be, one of those fragrances that just would blow you away because it was so different from everything else you would smell. It's really only been in the last few months creating fragrance content on YouTube that I've ever discovered people out there that didn't like Delina. And again, this isn't necessarily a list of people's most hated fragrances. It's not to say the people who said Delina hate it. Maybe they just think it's so-so or not as great as everyone makes it out to be. That one surprised me. Number eight, I completely agree with, and it is also on my list, YSL Libra. Now, I know some people really love this fragrance, so I don't want anyone to get too hot and bothered here, but I think it is okay. I don't know what happened that recently I hear so many people talking about YSL Libra, YSL Libra, the intense version. It's the best fragrance I've ever tried. Really? I don't get it. I liked the original and I kind of like the intense version. I was told that the intense version was going to be so much better, but I find it to be kind of sickeningly syrupy sweet. 
there's just something about it that I really don't love. And I would put it in maybe the same family as a Dior Hypnotic Poison, a Roja Reckless, which are fragrances that I do really enjoy. So I kind of feel like I should like it more than I do, but I just don't. Every time, I revisit it often because I keep thinking maybe this is the time that I'm gonna smell this fragrance on the blotter card and have an epiphany, and it just never happens. The bottle is beautiful. Maybe people are blinded by the bottle. It just looks so cool. I wish the fragrance on the inside matched the outside because I love that YSL, the gold lettering wrapping around the bottle. It's so aesthetically pleasing. I can understand why people love to post pictures of it. It looks awesome. The fragrance is very mediocre. So number seven is Good Girl by Carolina Herrera. That I didn't really expect either, and I guess it's because I didn't realize that so many people were hyping up the fragrance or really talking about it. I kept it, but I almost decluttered it in my last declutter video. I was kind of teetering on the fence. It was one of those fragrances that I really like, I really enjoy it. I think it's kind of smooth, creamy vanilla, but it's just kind of become lost in a sea of all of my other fragrances that I prefer. When I think about it, I do recognize the little stiletto heel bottle in a lot of people's thumbnails that I'll see as I'm scrolling, but I guess I didn't realize that people were still actively talking about it quite so much. I could see that being the case maybe when it first launched. I guess they're constantly launching new flankers, new bottles, sparkly shoe, red shoe, but to me, it kind of feels a little bit like old news. It's a nice fragrance. It's really pretty. I guess if it's your go-to, if it's your signature scent, of course you're gonna continue to wear it, but the fragrance cycle is just so intense. I feel like there are constantly new fragrances being launched left and right that I just sort of assumed that most people had forgotten about it. Number six on the list, I don't really understand. I'm gonna need somebody to explain this to me. Chanel number five. Are people hyping up Chanel number no. five? I mean, it's an iconic fragrance. It's a classic. And it launched so long ago, over a hundred years ago, Chanel number no. five first launched. So it is a huge deal. Maybe people feel like it's overhyped because of the 100th anniversary celebration. Like, why are we celebrating such a terrible smelling fragrance. I don't think it smells terrible at all. I actually really like the smell of number five. It's not something that I would wear, but I would wear the ancillaries. My mom still wears number five. She loves it. I believe to this day, it's still the number one best-selling women's fragrance every single year. And it's probably the best-selling women's fragrance of all time. So yeah, of course people are going to talk about it and it's going to have a lot of buzz and hype. I do still sometimes find it on best of lists. If I'm just Googling like new fragrances for spring 2022, I do this quite often, whatever I'm trying to discover new fragrances, instead of searching on YouTube, I'll search on Google and try to make a list of fragrances that I need to find in store so I can smell them. And a lot of times the list will still have Chanel number no. five and that's kind of a red flag for me because I know, oh, okay, this, all of these are sponsored spots. You know, like if Harper's Bazaar, Vogue, if they come out with a top 10 perfumes for spring or top 10 fragrances of the year, a lot of times you can tell that the brands just paid to be included on the list and it's basically just an advertisement. I will say that the holiday advertisements for Chanel Number no. 5 are still to this day classic, iconic. It doesn't feel like the holidays if I haven't seen a Chanel number no. five ad. Like Lily Rose Depp I think is in a lot of them. I remember the Giselle ads of course. I think it's just an old fragrance. Came out a hundred years ago. Is it still really relevant and modern? No, it's not, but is it an absolute legend? Yeah, it is. It absolutely is a legend. So I'm not sure I believe that it can be overhyped at this point. It's just so special. It's kind of the fragrance for women. Maybe here I am hyping it up. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that choice down in the comments. I'm very curious to read what you think about this. The top five overrated overhyped fragrances. Are you ready for this? Coming in at number five, Flower Bomb. 
This makes sense to me. I wouldn't have guessed that it would be on the list, but it does make sense. It's really popular. <laughs> and anytime a fragrance grows to that level of popularity, of course there are going to be some people who dislike it because like we talked about earlier, everybody's different. We have different preferences. Tell me if you think I'm completely wrong here, but I think what happened to Flower Bomb is sort of the same thing that happened to Coco Mademoiselle in that they're both just really nice, palatable fragrances. They're crowd pleasers. And so they just kind of took off like wildfires. And before anyone really knew what was happening, they just became bestsellers and you looked around and everybody was wearing the same thing. So it's not that it's a bad fragrance. They're both really great, but you just smell it everywhere. Everybody wears them. It's become a little bit redundant and overdone. And it's not the brand's fault. It's not anybody's fault. Nobody is to blame. They're still nice fragrances. It just, for whatever reason, it, it kind of just became a phenomenon. And now we're getting to the point where it feels a little bit played out. I have to be honest, I was caught off guard by number four, Valentino Born in Roma. I don't feel like I've really heard a lot of people talking about it. Maybe that's just me. My head is in the sand. I'm not really up with what's cool and what's trending in the fragrance world, but I like this perfume. I think it's very pretty. I like the bottle. I think the original Valentino Donna is really nice. They've come out with so many different interpretations. How many are there? There are probably five different variations of this fragrance. It's not gonna blow your world. It's not overly unique and they all kind of smell similar and it smells similar-ish to other fragrances. Like I, I don't know, maybe I've smelled them so much so often that they've all kind of blended together, but I sort of feel like Valentino Donna, Flower Bomb, those really popular sweet florals, kind of that best of the brand in all of the categories, they all smell very similar to me. The top three fragrances on this list received so many more responses and votes than any of the other fragrances. There was a very clear top three, definitely a clear number one choice. So coming in at number three, La Vie Belle. So many people said La Vie Belle and I wasn't overly surprised because I do hear a lot of people talk about it and I think it is kind of regarded as one of the best sellers, one of the best women's fragrances. I personally don't own it. And I don't even remember smelling it. I think it probably falls into that good, not great category, but I am not going to argue because so many people said La Vie Belle. I take your word for it. Coming in at number two, can you guess what it is? Black Opium from YSL. I don't know how I feel about this. I think Black Opium has been around for a really long time and it's just a classic. I think a lot of these fragrances, well, Flower Bomb, Black Opium, Chanel Number no. 5, there are a few on this list that they've just been around for a long time. I think it's not necessarily that they're overhyped or overrated, it's that people are just sick of talking about them. The Black Opium Illicit Green launched recently. It's nice. It's a little bit earthy, figgy, coffee. That coffee note is very distinct. Like it smells like a cup of coffee. Not something that I would wear now, so I've skipped it. But I, I do think it's a nice fragrance. I, you know, I don't know if it's something that I would personally like to wear on my skin, but I might just enjoy smelling it on other people. And the number one most overhyped, overrated fragrance, according to you, and it was actually on my list as well, which is going to surprise a lot of people. Baccarat Rouge 540 from Maison Francis Kurgian. Could it have been any other fragrance? I doubt it because it is the most hyped up, talked about fragrance. I mean, there is so much buzz. It's one of those fragrances that has a cult following. It's like, if you know, you know, you're in the club, you wear Baccarat, I wear Baccarat, we share that in common. We're, we're kinmen. <laughs> we're kindred spirits. It's just one of those things that has become 
a cultural phenomenon and it's so rare that this happens and it's amazing for a brand when it does happen and i think the fragrance house has truly benefited from this popularity people will seek out maison francis kurgian because they want to try baccarat rouge 540 maybe they get to the counter they're disappointed they don't like it but then they end up finding something else that they love like oud satin mood or pluriel or i love baccarat to this day, it is my most complimented, most worn fragrance. That's just my experience wearing it. I get complimented every single time. Somebody asks, ooh, what are you wearing? Ooh, what are you wearing? Always. And it's one of my longest lasting fragrances. So it used to be just kind of that one fragrance that I would always grab. Now recently, I've stopped grabbing it. I have a lot more to choose from now and I kind of like to experiment and just wear new things. But I do sort of feel like, uh, cat's out of the bag, the secret's gone, that, that shine, that sparkle that I used to feel wearing Baccarat has started to dim. And it's still such a great fragrance. My opinion on the fragrance itself has not changed. And in my initial review, I said it was the best women's fragrance of all time. I don't know if I stand by that. At the time, that is how I felt. And I do think it is just a remarkable fragrance. It makes my mouth water. I find it to be addicting. I love smelling it on other people. I love wearing it. But now that everybody wears it, I just, I think it's kind of ruined it a bit. Like the club has gotten too big. And I know that sounds sort of snobby. And of course, I don't really mean that. But it's kind of flower bomb syndrome. It's a very expensive flower bomb. Same kind of thing. Everybody's wearing it. Everybody's talking about it. And also, there are just so many dupes. I think that has also contributed to the downfall of Baccarat Rouge 540. I don't think there's a downfall happening. But because there are so many fragrances out there now that smell like or they are inspired by, it just sort of waters down the effect. Like you, why would you go for Baccarat when you can achieve a similar smell for a fraction of the cost, like Burberry Her? I haven't worn it in such a long time. I need to test. I need to do a little psychology experiment. Start wearing my Baccarat again and see if it still has that effect on people. It might not because people might be over it. Sounds like they are because so many people responded with Baccarat Rouge 540. And I do get it because it is hyped up. I'm one of those people. I am the responsible party. I have hyped up Baccarat Rouge 540, but I stand by it. I like it. I completely understand how other people wouldn't really like it. Now I'm going to share my personal list of the most overrated, overhyped fragrances. Yes, Baccarat Rouge 540 was on there. These are in no particular order. Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. I was so disappointed by this fragrance, and I think it garnered a lot of attention because it was said that Rihanna wore Love Don't Be Shy, so ooh, it's Rihanna's favorite. It must be good. Uh, there's something about it that I really don't like. There's a note in there that I find to be so harsh and just off-putting and not good. I don't hate this perfume, but I would never wear it. And I'm not sure I've ever truly let it dry down on my skin because I can't get past that first spray. The opening burst is just not nice. I think it smells very dated. I think that is what threw me the first time. Like I thought, oh, Rihanna, she's like this hot young sex symbol. This is going to be amazing. And then I smelled it and I thought, oh, this smells old. <laughs> I don't like this at all. Just not my favorite. It's mediocre. I don't like this, the smell on my skin. Not for me. Italica from Zerjoff. When this launched, there was a lot of buzz, a lot of hype. People were saying it was amazing. I saw a lot of different YouTubers talking about it. So it was a blind buy for me and I did purchase myself. I used my own coupon code on the Twisted Lily website. And when it arrived, I was just kind of left like, ah, oh, this is it. That's all. <laughs> this is what people are making such a big deal about. I know our noses are different blind buying fragrances is not always a smart idea and I did feel like I was burned a little bit. It's not, it's, it's so intense that I feel like I need to layer it with something else in order to make it work on my skin. 
it could have been perfect. I felt like all of the notes were right. It sounded ex like exactly like I, what I would want in a fragrance. And so it was really disappointing too because I think my expectations were just through the roof. Same thing happened with Blossom Love. And it just shocks me to this day. I feel shocked whenever I hear people saying it's one of the best floral fragrances, one of the best fragrances of all time. I could not get into it. It was green and harsh and I really wanted to love that cherry blossom note. I think that's what kicked off my journey for the perfect cherry blossom fragrance. And now I've collected quite a few and they are all 10 times better than Blossom Love and it's expensive. Next on my list is Gypsy Water from Byredo. Maybe not as much anymore, but when this first launched, it was everywhere. It was just buzzing around, so hyped up. Everybody was talking about it, it was trending. That was the cool fragrance. Like if you were into fragrance, you wore Gypsy Water. So you were part of the club. And when I went to smell it, it, it was just not very good. I could barely even smell anything. Like it wasn't even very strong just nothing. I, it gave me nothing. <laughs> so it, I was over it immediately. Juliet has a gun, not a perfume. A couple people mentioned that as a response. I completely agree. I don't understand the hype with that fragrance either. It's not very nice. It's kind of meh. It's okay. I personally would not choose to wear it. But another fragrance from Juliet has a gun that I find underwhelming is Vanilla Vibes. I didn't really like it. I felt like it smelled so artificial. Like, I don't know. It just was not right for me. And I have heard so many people rave about vanilla vibes and I don't get it. I almost feel like I need to try it again. Maybe my nose was broken that day and I need to test it again because I love vanilla. I love coconut. There's no reason why I wouldn't like this fragrance. But it just, it was an absolute no for me when I smelled that. Ooh, and then this one. I think I'm going to hurt some feelings here. But two people actually agreed with me and I felt so validated when I read those responses. Rouge Malachite from Armani Privé. It's the elevated line. This is one of those fragrances that makes so many people's best of list, sexiest fragrances, uh, best women's perfume, best fragrance ever, top 10 for life, top five for life. I see this fragrance everywhere. Everyone's talking about it as if it is the best thing. The first time I smelled it, I thought, wow, that is disappointing. And I remember leaving the counter like, what are people talking about? They've gone crazy. The second time I tried it, I felt different. I Maybe I just hadn't smelled other great fragrances that day that it actually stood out as being the best fragrance that I had tried in that moment. I think the opposite was true. The first day I smelled a lot of great fragrances and when I smelled that, it didn't really speak to me. So I kind of liked it the second time around. Not enough to purchase still, but I kind of thought, ooh, you know what? I need a sample, I need to try this on my arm. I, I, I wanted to like it, and I think I was kind of playing tricks on my own head. So the third time I tried it, and all three times were in different department stores, and I also was trying other fragrances that day, but the third time I walked away and I thought, no, I don't like it. It's okay, it's good. It's a good fragrance, but is it great? Is it worth that elevated Armani Privé price tag? I don't think it is. I just, I wanted there to be a little something more. And that is not to say I will never buy this fragrance. I almost feel like I need to have it in my collection so I can compare it with other things because it's so hyped up. I feel like I need to own it. Like I'm not a a good fragrance reviewer if I don't like that for fragrance. And it's not that I dislike it. I just, I don't know. I smell it and, and I like white florals, but it reminds me a lot of Gucci Bloom with a little something, something, something. A little spiciness, a little cinnamon. It's like a better version of Gucci Bloom. 
I think sometimes when we're shopping for fragrances, we allow ourselves to get caught up in the hype and, you know, get caught up in the buzz and we almost start to question our own preferences and question ourselves. Like everybody's saying this is such a great perfume, I need to like it as well. Or, you know, maybe it is that great. And so you end up purchasing fragrances that other people like, not fragrances that you like. So it is important to kind of always question yourself, question your preferences. If it doesn't speak to you immediately, it probably isn't meant to be. Most of the fragrances that I have really fallen head over heels for and I get the most use out of, to this day, they're still my favorite fragrances. I love them. Like, no question. It's an immediate yes. They speak to my spirit. I just, I, it's almost as if in that split second, I can immediately picture myself wearing it. Like, I know that it's for me. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everybody who participated in my Instagram poll. I have a feeling people are going to have a lot to say about this one. I hope all feelings are intact, but feel free to sound off down below in the comment section. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.